I was new in town and had just found a new job in the local diner. I didn't mind the late hours and plus it was extra money for me to buy the latest computer games and style I wanted to buy. I loved shopping, so as I worked in the diner, I just felt happy about getting my wage pack on Friday. I hopped on the bus to get my bus ride home, and as I got into the bus, I spotted a creepy looking guy sitting in the back. It was late and I was on my own, but at least the driver was on the bus with me, and this creepy man also. It wasn't just me and him. I felt weird still. I felt like the guy's eyes were piercing through me, even though I couldn't see him. I just tried to relax and enjoy the bus ride home as much as I could in this strange situation. I then told myself, wait, I'm just on a bus with a weird looking guy who is probably harmless. Nothing has happened. I looked behind and felt a shiver run through me as I could have sworn he moved up a seat closer to me. I couldn't be sure, but when I turned around again, I knew for certain, as he was right behind me, sitting in the seat, smiling with such a sinister smile. I turned around and ignored him, and didn't look back. When I got home, I could see my dad's paper resting on the sofa, and I got such a fright when I saw the same creepy man's face staring up at me and reading the headline it said the man had been killed by a bus on the exact same bus route I took. I had then realised the man who was on the bus with me was a ghost. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper and if you want to stay up to date on new content then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Robbie was really upset on Halloween, listening to his friends talk about going to the Halloween party that was being held in his friend's Richard's house. The party was expected to go on all night as his parents were out of town and it was just him holding fort in his house. Robbie just stood there with envy, listening to his friends talk about it. Richard said to his friends, This party is going to be amazing. We can party all night and there is going to be loads of drinks and everything. Ye guys better come early so we can make the most of my crib being parent free. Robbie was invited to the party, but unfortunately wasn't allowed by his mom. Most of the people going to the party were dressing as one of the most popular costumes of the year, which was from a new internet craze from a very popular movie that just was released, called The Clown of Halloween. The Clown had no name other than The Clown of Halloween. Robbie loved the character until it had become the reason he wasn't allowed to go to the Halloween party. His mom got a call from the local cinema one day who had told her he had snuck in to see the Clown of Halloween movie. Robbie's mom was very religious and grounded him instantly and of course didn't allow him go to the Halloween party. The next day when Robbie's mom was listening to the news on the radio, she was glad she didn't allow him go when she had heard the newsreader say, Last night at approximately 10.30pm, a lone gunman entered a Halloween party in Woodsbridge town and opened fire killing only people who were dressed in the costume The Clown of Halloween, which is based on the new horror movie and internet craze The Clown of Halloween. The gunman or gun person was apparently wearing the outfit of The Clown of Halloween also. That night Robbie's mom heard something out in the garden 
and caught Robbie burying something in the garden. She froze when she saw that what he was burying was the costume of the clown of Halloween, which splattered blood all over it, and next to it was a gun. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Matthew was a bright kid, he had his good points and was even actually caring and could be very helpful when he wanted to be, but he fell down in one big way. He always used to love to play stupid pranks on people and these pranks really started as just silly pranks at first, like maybe putting a bucket of iced water over a door that he knew his friend would walk through and one time he put a rat in a gift box for his friend. He used to get a kick out of pranking people and it got him into a lot of trouble over the years. But it was one day when he was older and he should have known better, he did the most dangerous and stupid prank of all. Actually, it couldn't even be called a prank. It was just crazy, reckless, dangerous and stupid. He was standing up on the top of an apartment he lived in, way up high at the top of a skyscraper, and he decided to see what would happen if he left a sharp knife fall from the top. The knife fell down and eventually, before hitting the ground, unfortunately hit a guy and killed him stone dead. Matthew didn't intend to hurt anyone, but he sure as hell wasn't going to admit it was him and he sure didn't want to get caught for murdering someone. So he just kept his mouth shut. Little did he know there was a woman looking at the whole thing across the way with a pair of binoculars. The next day the woman was telling the mom of the dead boy, I am very sorry to tell you this, but I know who killed your son. A few days later Matthew was walking into his apartment and the light wasn't working. He fell over some wire. He landed on lots of knives that were fixed into a plank of wood and died from loss of blood as the knives plunged through his body and head. The mom of the boy that Matthew killed smiled when she saw Matthew in a pool of blood. She was glad her plan of revenge worked. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Ben was relaxing watching TV when he decided to scroll through his phone and was shocked when he saw photos of himself posing with what looked like a dead body in his room. He scrolled through some more photos of him, smiling near a dead body. He not only didn't remember any of these photos being taken, but the only dead body he ever saw was of his grandfather years ago. He froze in shock and didn't know what to do. Suddenly he heard a siren outside his house, and there was a knock at the door. He answered to two police officers. Five minutes later they arrested Ben in his bedroom where the body that was in the photograph was taken. 
Ben was in shock, trying to explain to the police officers he didn't kill anyone and he didn't know how those photos were taken and said they must have been photoshopped. A week later, experts analysed them and were confident the photos weren't doctored in any way. When Ben was in prison, he tried to comprehend what happened. One hundred miles away, Jake, his twin brother, that he never knew he had, was writing in his diary. Finally, I got my own back on my twin brother, who didn't even know I existed. He had it all, a big house, parents, and a great upbringing, while I was bouncing from foster parents to foster parents, and most of them were drunk. Finally, Ben couldn't take it anymore and hung himself in his cell. At that exact moment, Jake felt a moment of peace and calm. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. It was Halloween night and everyone was having so much fun. Tony and his kids started the day early, shopping for Halloween and really enjoyed it, since it was his favourite time of the year. He then went trick-or-treating with his kids and it reminded him of his own childhood and the excitement and fun of trick-or-treating. They ended the night in his grandfather's house. His grandfather was throwing a Halloween party and most of the family were there. They were in the hallway of a huge house he inherited from his father and he was telling a ghost story. He said, The vase here next to me was passed down from generation to generation and it contains the ashes of a pirate who was our great 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 grandfather. Legend has it that if this vase is broken by any of our generation, then it will bring bad luck to anyone involved with that person. Tony laughed and he said, we are all here tonight, so that would mean we would be all doomed. Later that night, Tony's eldest son walked into the living room and said, Hey, I am not being smart, and I didn't do it on purpose. As a matter of fact, I didn't do it at all, and I'm not getting the blame. But remember that story about if any of our generation broke the vase, it will bring us bad luck? Well, our youngest of our generation just knocked it over and broke it by accident. Simon, who was only six, had a scared look at his face. He didn't even see the vase. He didn't even hear the ghost story until his older brother told him about it. Tony's grandfather went crazy, but tried to calm down after a while. That night when they finally got to sleep, Simon had a nightmare and he told Tony that he dreamt of the pirate. He dreamt he saw him at the bottom of his bed. Tony said don't listen to his great grandfather's silly ghost stories, they're not real. As Tony turned around, he froze in horror when he saw floating in the air a pirate. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Tracy was eight years old and had a habit of burying things in the garden. Her mom didn't really mind as she used to remember when she was her age she used to think she could dig to Australia since it was cold down under. One night it was a doll she buried. 
The next night it was a teddy bear she buried, and it really upset her mom one night when it was a stray cat she was burying. Jackie, her mom, screamed when she saw the dead stray cat and asked Tracy where did she get it. Tracy said the devil told her to bury it. Jackie was very concerned and knew that Tracy had to be seen by a therapist. Jackie tried to find out did Tracy find the cat or actually kill it herself. Tracy went through months and months of therapy and thankfully she didn't bury anything else until one night. Jackie saw Tracy dig a hole and she was amazed at how big the hole was. She said to Tracy, Sweetie, you know you're not meant to bury anything anymore, Tracy said. I know, mother, but this is the very last thing I will ever bury. Jackie asked her what it was. Tracy pulled out a gun and said, You, mother. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Michael and his girlfriend Sarah were invited along with their friends Paul and Susan to a new restaurant that just opened. They won a competition on the radio and were very excited to be able to walk into a restaurant and order anything on the menu and not worry about the price. They were all students and didn't have much money to spare with all the expense of college. When they all arrived at the restaurant, they were admiring the outside of it. They heard a lot about it and knew it was very expensive, which was another reason them winning a free meal was a great win. When they sat down in the restaurant and looked at the menu, they appreciated more not having to pay as the meals were so expensive. They ordered their food and ate their meals and were really impressed. When it came to desserts, Michael was the only one to order that by chocolate. The rest ordered just plain ice cream. They relaxed after the meal drinking coffee. When they were finished and decided to go home, they had ordered a taxi, and while they were waiting, Michael saw a truck coming straight for him and screamed. He was blown off the footpath and thrown across the street as a chocolate ice cream truck ran him over. Michael knew he could open his eyes now because they would still be across the street, thinking he was ran over and killed. Little did they know this accident had been planned for months by a friend of his who was a stunt driver. The reason he faked his own debt was because he owed a lot of money to the wrong people, and he had planned on telling his friends he was alive when it was safe to do so. They worried if his body wasn't picked up, yet by a fake ambulance. That was a part of the plan, then a real ambulance will arrive. But Michael didn't have to worry, because a sign pole that was hit outside the shop by the truck, saying fresh ice cream on sale here, fell and hit him on the head, and he was killed instantly. Silhouettes of you are like a tongue.
Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper. And if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Thomas was looking forward to go to the cinema on Friday night. There was an exclusive invite only of a new zombie movie at 6, and right away there was a public screening at 8, which he was going to. He was really looking forward to the movie, as it promised to give a new cinema experience never experienced before. Thomas had an early dinner before heading out for the cinema. He finished his meal, then five minutes later he was driving to the cinema. He loved going to the cinema since he was a little boy. He knew that he loved the cinema since the very first time he stepped foot inside one. The local cinema was a 20 minute drive for him. He drove a bit faster because he didn't want to miss the start of the movie. He knew they would put on maybe 15 minutes of ads, so that gave him some extra time. When he arrived at the cinema, he went to get his ticket scanned, but was surprised there was a big crowd of people looking very upset. The person behind the counter said, I'm sorry everyone, the cleaners are still in screen 7, we won't be long more, I'm very sorry for this, it's not cleaned yet. The crowd were growing more and more impatient, as it was now 8 o'clock. Thomas had patience, but this was driving him crazy. He was wondering would the movie be still on, or would he miss the start of it. The crowd were really irritated now with the long wait. He pretended to go to the bathroom, and as he was passing screen 7, he snuck in. He was waiting to be told. It wasn't ready by the cleaners, but they didn't say anything. It was almost like the crowd from the premiere didn't even leave yet. It was so dark, it was hard to see. Thomas got out his torch. He always brought to the cinema to find his seat, as he liked it old school instead of using his phone's torch. He screamed when he could see there was a group of what looked like zombies coming for him. He said to himself it must be some sort of fancy dress for the premiere, until the lights came on, and he was then bombarded with the evil, twisted sight of what looked like zombies lying down in the ground in pools of blood. Out in the foyer, the crowd waiting, were pleased to hear the man behind the counter say, OK everyone, sorry for the delay, but the cleaners are finished now, ye are free to go into Screen 7, enjoy the movie. The crowd walked in to Screen 7, really looking forward to see the movie. All their frustration was gone already, because all they wanted to do was watch the movie and enjoy it. When they went into Screen 7, they could hear growling and couldn't register anything else, because that is when they were turned in to zombies. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Matthew was out at a meeting for work. 
which his wife expected to have gone on for a few hours more. But the meeting ended a few hours early, which afforded Matthew to drive home a few hours earlier. Matthew knew that his wife Susan was a bit distant lately, and he expected she was cheating. But what he would see when he got home made him feel so angry he felt like going into the bedroom and killing his wife and lover. But he knew he had to wait for the right time. He felt his blood boil when he saw his wife in bed with another man. Matthew set up hidden cameras around his house and used to monitor them from his office at work. The cameras only went on when there was movement to avoid him from having to trawl through tons of footage. One night he saw his wife and lover talking in the bedroom and they were organising to drive out to a really beautiful spot he knew. When he heard the conversation, all of a sudden the spot he knew brought a whole new beautiful meaning to him, because he knew exactly what he would do. The next night Susan was driving in her car with her lover. She smiled saying to him, this is such a beautiful spot. I used to come here with my husband. The view is so beautiful. It's just down the road. Jack, her lover, said, If it's just down the road, why don't we just walk? She smiled back and said, Because I always use the car to get here, because you can have a lot of fun in the car, if you know what I mean. With that, Susan got an awful fright. As she realized, she could not slow the car down. Herself and Jack screamed as the car went faster and faster towards the edge of the cliff. Matthew was driving behind, smiling to himself as he saw the car drive right off the cliff. He parked the car and smiled. Susan said to Jack, jump out of the car, jump quick now. They both jumped before the car went off the cliff. Susan walked up behind her husband, who wanted to have killed her, and was smiling, thinking he did kill her, and she hit him with a rock, knocking him off the edge of the cliff to his death. Susan knew that she had to put on an act of the grieving wife. Poor Susan, her husband, drove off a cliff in an awful tragic accident and perished to his death. All the while, while Susan thought about this and the act of the grieving wife, she smiled. And then she hugged and kissed her lover. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Mary was sitting down watching movies on Easter Sunday. She was feeling nostalgic about when her husband was alive. They had no kids, but they still loved to have an Easter egg hunt in the garden. She missed him even though he drove her mad when he was alive. It was Easter Sunday the year before, was the last day Dave, her husband, was alive. Memories came flooding back to her, the good ones and the bad. The police ruled it as a missing persons case until they found some of his clothing in the local lake. Then they said it was a tragic accident. Sometimes Mary wished he was still alive and they could have their Easter egg hunt and get sick from eating too much chocolate and then laugh about it. But that was just a happy memory that was overshadowed by loads of bad ones. She made a rule to herself to never buy another Easter egg, as it would just bring it all up again. Suddenly something caught her eye outside. 
she was shocked to see a bunny staring at her through the window. Bunnies also brought up bad memories. She stood up and noticed something outside in the garden. She was shocked to see it was a basket of Easter eggs. A few minutes later when she went out to the garden, she realized there were a few unwrapped and cracked a bit. She looked inside the egg and screamed to see a hand. In the next one there was an ear, and in the next one an eye. When she looked around at the bunny, he was gone. It all came back to her. How could this be happening? Last Easter Sunday, she boiled her husband's bunny after getting the idea from the movie Fatal Attraction. They had a big fight, and she killed him, and didn't know what to do, except cut him into pieces and bury him in the garden. And she knew by a mark under his earlobe that it was her husband's body pieces. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Teresa was worried about her sister Judy. Judy was arrested several times in the last few months and recently was put on house arrest. She was pleased that her sister was at home and knew that all her friends were forbidden to call to see her. She knew that Judy hated being in the house the whole time, but also was happy that she wouldn't find herself get into any trouble by being able to go outside. Teresa was walking around her local park when she had noticed there was a trailer with a psychic in it. She wondered what a psychic would be like and knew she didn't believe in them, but she needed a distraction, so she went into the trailer. She hoped she was free to see her, and she was. A few minutes later, Teresa realized that the psychic had just confirmed she was a charlatan when she had been making no sense about her sister killing people today that were working in a restaurant. Teresa was smiling inwardly, knowing how could she kill anyone that works in a restaurant when she can't even go outside her door. Teresa tried to look as interested as she could, and she was actually enjoying the whole entertainment of it. The novelty value wore off fast when she had to pay the charlatan $20. She was cursing herself for walking home, knowing she could have went to a great movie in the cinema and had a meal with her $20 that she spent on that damn charlatan. When Teresa got home, she noticed something looked wrong. Her door was open. She knew that her sister wouldn't have gone out. She hated prison and wouldn't risk that. As Teresa got nearer, she screamed as she saw four different delivery drivers dead just outside the door. Judy was standing inside the door in a daze. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Hello, my name is Michael. I used to love eating dinner with my dad and mom and sister 
We used to have a salad one day, a pizza the next, then a nice homemade Chinese curry. But one day my dad decided to drive us to McDonald's. When we went inside, I loved it. I loved the look of it. I loved the taste of the food. And I loved everything about it. And so did my dad, my sister and my mom. We all had a Big Mac and fries. We really enjoyed it. And to be honest, I was really looking forward to go back to McDonald's again. But what really made things take a bad turn is when my dad brought us back there every night that week. Me and my mom and sister didn't want to upset him by telling him we were getting tired of it because we knew how much he enjoyed it. Me and mom and my sis were in the living room one night discussing what we would do. We knew we had to do something about it. After a while, it wasn't just one meal my dad had, it was three, and then four, and five. Eventually, one day, I went cooking with my mom. We made a meal that we knew my dad used to love before he got obsessed with McDonald's. He looked at the meal when he came into the kitchen and said in anger, What is this? We are going to McDonald's. My mom said, Sweetie, we know you love McDonald's, but we just thought that we were having so much lately we would like a change, and we made a lovely curry that you used to absolutely love. My dad stormed out of the house, and about an hour later he came back and put loads of McDonald's bags on the table. He shouted at us. Ye think he can just forget about McDonald's? He pulled out a gun and pointed it at us and said, Eat up, eat everything that's in those bags. He pointed the gun at us until we ate every single thing in the bags, until we all got sick. He then smiled and said, don't ever disrespect McDonald's, because every time I'm eating McDonald's, I'm loving it. He then gave a sinister smile. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Sharon was always scaring her little sister Nora with different stories about monsters. One night Sharon purposely lost track going home and made sure they ended up having to walk through the graveyard. When they were walking through the graveyard, Sharon was telling one of her fabricated stories to frighten Nora. She was telling her about a monster that haunted the graveyard they had to walk through and that the monster always made its victims get lost before they ended up in the graveyard. Nora was crying over one of her stories one day and her mom was mad at Sharon and said angrily, Sharon, don't be frightening your little sister. You're meant to be nice to her and care for her, not scare the living daylights out of her with one of your silly stories. It was Halloween night when Sharon got a piece of her own medicine. She walked into a room and saw a monster floating in the air and she knew it was no costume and it definitely was no trick. She froze and then ran telling her mom and dad. Her dad of course didn't believe her because all the stories she always makes up about monsters. Then her mom walked into the room and what happened next made Sharon freeze in fear and is what made this Halloween her scariest Halloween ever. Her boat parents turned into monsters right in front of her eyes and they turned back to like they were before.
She was speechless. Her dad said, Sharon, your little sister isn't ready to know the truth yet, but for some reason since we came to Earth, you always were curious about monsters. We are viewed as monsters by humans, so we have to keep it a secret, but I'm hoping your obsession with monsters will end now that you know the truth, and nature will teach you how to deal with how unique you are. We don't know anyone else like us, but we came from another planet. With that, Sharon woke up sweating, thanking God it was just a dream. It seemed so real. She promised herself she would never ever tell another stupid made up story about a monster ever again to her little sister and to anyone for that matter. Suddenly her sister walked into the room and had a story that was a monster story, and one that was true, and one that frightened Sharon to the core. And it ended with Nora saying, I'm not afraid of monsters anymore, Sharon, because all our family are monsters. And with that, Nora changed into a monster. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Michael and his mom, Jane, were visiting their friend Mary, who they didn't see for years. Michael found it very nice visiting her again, since they were out of the country for years, but her home was just how he remembered it. Mary lived with her son, Jack. Michael and Jane were chatting to Mary for about a half an hour when Mary dropped a bombshell. She said to Michael and Jane, This isn't my house anymore, you know. Jane asked what did she mean, and Mary kept talking. This isn't my house anymore. There are people living upstairs. They come back after work at about midnight. I'm in bed by the time they're back. I never see them. There was a big stairs in the house, but there were only one room on each side. Jane said, but what room do they live in? You only had two rooms upstairs. Mary said, they're all in one room. Michael and his mom, Jane, taught either two things, that Mary was playing a trick on them or was simply confused. They spoke for a while longer while drinking coffee. After a while, Mary showed Jane her garden. She was admiring her flowers. There were beautiful, colorful flowers all over her garden. While Michael's mom and Mary were admiring the garden, his curiosity got the better of him, and he walked upstairs. He opened the door that was Jack's bedroom, and luckily he wasn't there. But it was just like he remembered it. There was a basketball and a baseball bat resting up against the wall. He froze when he heard a noise. He couldn't place what it was, but he went to open the door to the only other room upstairs. He froze when he saw in the far side of the room a cage with two men and two women inside. He quickly rang the police and within 10 minutes the police arrived. He was lucky he remembered the local police station's number. Michael was delighted to have saved the people kept captive. He found it strange that the policeman was talking privately with Mary. He listened outside the door to see could he hear what he was saying, and a shiver ran up his spine when he heard the cop say to Mary, Mary, I know you get confused and talk about all different things, but how many times do I have to tell you that you can't speak about those people upstairs? The other cop was on the phone, and I could hear, Jack, how in the hell are we meant to protect you running a people trafficking operation when your mother keeps telling people that there are people living in the house? 
Michael froze, wondering what to do. When the two policemen came back into the room, he acted like he didn't notice anything. His mom Jane didn't even have the chance to be told by Michael what was happening. Thankfully, Michael and Jane were able to leave the house, and as soon as he did, he explained to his mom. Suddenly, he smelled smoke and could see it was coming out of the windows. Mary was outside her house shouting, Why are ye leaving so early? I am just about to make ye some dinner. Michael had guessed Mary had left food on burning, which caused a fire. But what a great time she did cause a fire, as he rang the firefighters right away and explained what he saw upstairs. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Joseph moved in with his wife, Lisa, to a house in a secluded area, but that suited him fine. They came from the big bright lights of New York City and wanted to move away from the hectic city lifestyle. At first, Joseph and his wife hated the quietness and stillness of the area. After a few weeks, Joseph found himself going crazy when he was trying to go to sleep at night with the sound of the waterfall nearby. It haunted him, and when he eventually did fall asleep, he dreamt of stormy weather or the waterfall while he was drowning in it. His wife seemed to just sleep through the night, and it never bothered her, no matter how loud or annoying it got. He wished he had earplugs, but couldn't believe they would do any good, as the sound was so loud. It was driving him crazy. The next day when he got up, he just sat down, nearly falling asleep in front of the TV, because he couldn't get no sleep at night. One night it was different. It was almost like the waterfall was calling his name to come to it. The sound felt much, much different. It was like music to his ears. It was like the complete opposite of what it was like before. He was smiling at how appetizing the sound seemed to be. He got up from bed and got dressed and walked towards the waterfall. The noise of it was like beautiful, relaxing, soothing music to his ears. Then suddenly he saw the most beautiful lady. He remembered then. How could he forget? She was just standing next to the waterfall, waiting for him to embrace her. And that is just what he was going to do. Before he saw her skin, colour change. And then he had realised the horror and what he kept locked away in a box in his mind and never wanted to open again. His wife had drowned in the waterfall a week ago and he did everything he could to help her, but he just couldn't save her. He then realized who was the woman up in the house with him. Then he realized, of course, there was no woman up in the house with him. It was just his mind and the waterfall playing tricks with him. 
Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper. And if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Sam was 10 years old and loved cats. A few years ago, unfortunately, the only cat he had was ran over by a car on the road outside his house. He was heartbroken as he had no friends and felt like the only one who understood him was his cat. He spent days and nights in bed upset about his cat getting killed. One day he was walking in the woods when he came across a woman dressed like a witch, standing in front of a cauldron. He wondered why she was dressed like a witch, when it wasn't even Halloween for another few months. Then he got a start wondering, was she actually really a witch, especially when she had a cauldron in front of her? He made up his mind, of course she had to be a real witch. The witch said to him, now there, dear boy, there seems to be something troubling you. What is it, may I ask? The boy frowned then said, It's my cat, my poor cat Snowy. He got ran over by a car outside my house. The witch smiled and this troubled Sam. Why would she smile after he just told her his poor cat got ran over by a car? Then she said, my dear boy, it is very sad news indeed that your cat got killed, but I have some good news for you. I have a very special cat that does all sorts of tricks. This cat can perform better tricks than any other cat you might see in any circus. And the best news is, my dear boy, that you can have my cat and give him the name you choose, but you can only have him under one condition, and one condition only, and that is, do not ever, ever, and I mean never, ever make money from him. Do not ever take any money for anything you do with that cat. Don't accept any offer from anyone. If you abide by that rule, the cat is all yours, but if you don't, well, just put it this way, my dear boy, I warned you. The boy was scared of the witch and just stared at her with fear for what felt like an hour, but was only minutes. Then he finally said, I would really love to have your cat lady. I promise I won't ever take any money from anyone for anything to do with your cat. The witch smiled and said, well then my dear boy, the cat is all yours. Suddenly a black cat came out from behind the cauldron and walked up to Sam. Sam was so happy to have a cat again and wondered what tricks he did exactly. As the months went on, he found out more and more. Word got around town of the cat having amazing skills in so many different areas. It was known to be able to jump at unexplainable heights and so much more. Videos of the cat started going viral, but Sam stuck to his word and didn't earn any money from his cat. He turned down countless offers. One man in particular was a multi-millionaire with a huge empire made up of cat clothes, food, events and so much more around cats. The man was called Harry Dean. He made the boy an offer of five million dollars for his cat. Sam declined. On the day the man gave the cat his most expensive cat food, that cats absolutely adored the world over, but the cat wouldn't touch it. He practically turned his nose up to it. He went up to the boy instead and started eating his cheapest cat food he could afford from the local mall. Sam's parents couldn't understand why Sam believed the crazy old woman in the woods pretending to be a witch. 
they kept trying to get him to make money from the cat. They could see the fortune they were turning down over some stupid idea of a woman thinking she was a witch. One day Sam's parents tricked him into making money from the cat. They promised him when he was going on the news talking about him, they wouldn't be paid anything. But of course, they were paid a fine sum. They would give him some extra pocket money to lessen any guilt they might have. They wouldn't tell him where the money came from, of course. Sam was on the news talking about his cat. Hi, my name is Sam and I had a very nice cat a few years ago and his name was Snowy. Snowy was a very curious cat and used to always wander out onto the road. That is what killed him in the end. A car ran him over and they didn't even stop to say sorry. He was just lying there on the road dead. I was upset for weeks and weeks. Then one day I was walking in the woods and I met a lady. She was dressed as a witch. First I thought she wasn't a witch because it isn't every day you see a witch. But I know now that it was definitely a real witch. Because how else would my cat Miley know how to do all these wonderful, amazing tricks? My mom and dad tell me I'm silly for believing that woman was a witch. But I know what I saw and I know that woman was a witch. The next day Sam was delighted to have gotten extra pocket money. He was playing with his cat Miley. His mom walked in the room and screamed when she saw the cat's eyes on the floor. She wondered why Sam hadn't screamed until she knew the reason when she got closer. The cat's eyes were intact. It was Sam's eyes were scrawled out of his sockets from the witch's cat. We have very tragic breaking news today that 10 year old Sam Wilson was tragically murdered last night. It is believed that his parents are in custody and are about to be charged with the murder of the boy. The boy was just sitting on the chair over there speaking to me yesterday about how his parents wouldn't believe him about his story of getting a cat from a witch. The boy was convinced that he did have a witch's cat and this story is unfolding as we speak so we will keep you updated with information as soon as we get it. Our thoughts and prayers are with the young boy who has tragically lost his life to such a brutal and senseless act of violence. watching the assassin rapper and if you want to stay up to date on new content then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content Leah was so envious of her friends because they were able to go to rock and roll concerts every weekend. Rock and roll was really taking off in her town, but her dad was a pastor and said it was the music of the devil. If he had his way, he would ban the music altogether. She just knew her dad didn't understand the music and wish he could feel it like she did. She didn't just listen to the music, she felt the music. Her friends used to tell her of great rock and roll shows they used to go to and explain how great the guitarists were and so much more. Leah used to have a pin pal where they used to exchange photos of Elvis Presley etc. But her dad happened to come across one of her letters and got mad and grounded her for a whole week. 
he didn't want her to do anything that had anything to do with rock and roll. When she was in her bedroom, she was so angry at her dad for not letting her enjoy the amazing music which rock and roll was. One summer day, her friends were walking in the beach and they came across a caravan where there was a fortune teller called Mystic Marie. Leah decided to go in. She knew her dad would definitely disapprove, as he said any power humans have for telling the future, etc., doesn't come from God, but the devil. Marie said as soon as Leah sat down, Something is bothering you. Please tell me what it is. Leah began to start at the start and tell her that her father stops her from listening to rock and roll and going to rock and roll concerts and she just wishes he could feel rock and roll, really feel it and its effects. She loved the effect it had on her. Marie promised her she would grant her wish. The next weekend Leah had decided to sneak out to a rock and roll concert and she had so much fun. Her dad must have had a premonition she would do it, because he had noticed she had snuck out. He went out looking for her, and as he was walking by a cliff, he heard a noise. He turned around to see what it was, and saw a huge rock roll towards him. He screamed as the rock hit him and pushed him off the cliff to his death. When Leah found out what had happened, she felt so guilty and blamed herself, and instantly hated the words rock and roll. watching the assassin rapper and if you want to stay up to date on new content then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content Mandy was an inspiring writer who had an agent with interest in a manuscript she had wrote. The manuscript showed potential, but wasn't publishing worthy were her agent's words. Mandy felt a surge of excitement at the very fact her agent was ready and willing to give her a chance. But her agent stressed that she would have to come up with a whole new manuscript that proved she was a writer that had the talent to write a novel that had the potential to be a bestseller. Mandy was a carer to a very ill world famous writer. His name was Arnold Starr. He had a string of best-selling novels and lots of them were turned into movies. Arnold kept telling Mandy that he had his best work hidden away and only she knew about it but asked her to give the manuscript to his agent in the event of him dying. He gave her a key code to get into the room that the manuscript was hidden in and he promised her that no one knew about the manuscript, not even his agent. One summer evening, Arnold passed away peacefully in his bed. Mandy had did exactly what Arnold had asked of her and put in the code and retrieved his manuscript. She was about to call his agent when a crazy idea entered her head. What if she kept the manuscript? and gave it to her agent. That night in her own home, she rang her agent and said, Hi, I have great news. 
I am finished my manuscript, and I am so happy with it. I took your advice, and tried my best to prove to you that you're right, that I have the talent to write a potential bestseller. After the call, Mandy settled down with a glass of wine and read the manuscript. It was exciting and gripping from the opening line. On the last page, she was surprised as she read. There was a spirit in the house of a girl called Mandy. They wanted revenge for a wrong she did, to get even from something she took belonged to them. Mandy thought she heard a noise in her stairs, but as frightened as she was by feeling a cold sting in the air and what she had just read, she felt forced to read on. So she did. The words staring up at her were, the noise stopped in the stairs, and the spirit knocked on the door. Suddenly the door swung open, and Mandy was shocked to see Arnold standing right at the door. He looked right at her, and his stare made her drop dead. His spirit disappeared. A few days later, Mandy's agent found the manuscript, and about a year later, it was published as Mandy's first and only book, and it went on to become a number one bestseller, which was always Mandy's dream. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Martin was shocked when he overheard his sister Mary talking about looking forward to win a tennis tournament. He first thought it was fixed, but when he overheard a conversation with her new weird boyfriend, he was shocked and couldn't believe what he heard. He often heard of different conspiracies, like people in high paid jobs and very high positions sold their soul to the devil, Illuminati and all different types of different conspiracies. But when he heard his sister say she was really looking forward to play knowing she would definitely win and become a champion, it really made him stand up and listen and wonder how did she know she was going to win. He froze behind the door, she said. I'm really looking forward to win the tournament. I worked so hard to win anyway, so it doesn't matter that we're using the help of Satan. Anyway, Satan will appreciate us using his help. Her boyfriend Jack said, Satan will really appreciate you doing this. And believe me, that boxer you saw win a world title the other night, I'm not saying he would have won it without the help of Satan but he paid great respect to him by letting his power help him. Martin couldn't understand what he was hearing. He wanted to ask his sister what in the name of God were they talking about. It all seemed so weird and, well, obviously satanic. Martin always was afraid of anything to do with the occult and it really sent shivers up his spine to think that his own sister, who was sleeping under the same roof as him, could be a Satanist. A few days passed and he had the opportunity to listen to his sister and boyfriend speak again. This time they mentioned a special room in a huge house that her boyfriend lived in. Martin knew that he had to see that room, so he planned and planned and eventually made his way in there. It was a hard plan to come up with and took an awful lot of work, but he did it and he did it well and that is the reason why he was able to get inside the room. But when he got in there, it was just an empty room with some sort of table or altar in the front. He heard noise, so quickly hid under the cloth covering the table. 
he heard voices talking about people getting into positions near the altar and then they find themselves in that position in real life. By the conversation he learned, that is how the boxer became a champion, how his sister won the tennis championship. They just needed toy trophies or whatever to use and whatever position they made near the altar, that is the position they would soon find themselves in real life. He wanted to get out of the room fast, but suddenly he heard a man say, I'll guard the room tonight. Martin froze in fear, knowing that he could not escape the room tonight. He could not believe that this altar is how they got their positions of power, all those people his sister was talking about. He tried to go to sleep, so just lay down on his back and rested his hands on his stomach. He eventually fell asleep. A few days later he was lying in the same position. It was lying in the coffin position. In a coffin. Dead. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Neve was starting college with her friend Mary, and she was sharing the same dorm with her. But for some reason Mary didn't want Neve sleeping in the same room. It really puzzled Neve, as Mary's reason for her not wanting her to sleep in the same room was because she sleepwalks. And she explained if she slept in the same room, she would end up dead. Mary couldn't even comprehend how she would end up dead by just her sleepwalking. She wondered was it because Mary was afraid she would end up stabbing her while she was sleepwalking. But Mary said she didn't know, she just knew that if she did sleep there, then they would both end up dead. Neve had reluctantly decided to sleep next door, but before Mary came back from class one day, Neve snuck under Mary's bed to see would she sleepwalk. She felt tired as nothing was happening, nothing at all, but then all of a sudden she could hear something. It was Mary and she began to sleepwalk. Neve followed her slowly and she opened her door and walked down the hall. There was no one else around, as it was in the middle of the night. She opened an outside door, and she followed Mary sleepwalking. Before she knew it, she was standing on a treadmill that was going so fast, it forced herself and Mary off the top of the building, down to the ground, where they both were killed on impact. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content.